Hello, one and all. I'm here to illuminate you today on um, what actually went wrong with the Dark Heresy thing and how it's all gone to shit. So, uh, you know that my previous Dark Heresy campaign that I was playing with the guys, that all went wrong and we did feature about why that might have happened. Uh, but uh, yeah, then we started playing with an online group. I started playing with uh, some people of different countries and we would do the voice part on Skype and meet up and play on Roll20 and there was a bit of featuring of it via YouTube and uh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, it was it was going okay. It was passing by. It there were some negatives for me as a player. I was playing a preacher called Solomon and he was a redemptionist. And I think the feeling was always that, you know, this cleric is crazy and that kind of thing. But from what I know clerics to be in the 40k universe, they are crazy. You know, they do have like access to things like flagellation and 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 the the things that that prove them beyond the normal reckoning of 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 the unfaithful or just the normally faithful you know they are they are pushed to extreme limits and that's just standard clerics so i mean the fact that it was a redemptionist we had a handle on it and we played it okay and you know he did some cool things within the party now <clears throat> the thing was as I mean, there were a few group dynamic problems anyway, as we were as we were playing. One of them was that things would invariably end up slower because the GM's having to deal with one person at a time, even more so because it's via completely um voice chat. The other thing was that we had a few people that would shout kinda of too loud and when they would do that, no one else can talk anyway. And it got on people's nerves a bit not just me and it became a whole big thing and throughout this campaign I was another GM from another system anyway and the GM of this <clears throat> would very often consult me ask me my opinion on on um, uh, what what do I think of the way he's he's doing this and is there a way around you know like certain GM issues sort of things so, so like um, uh, you know, I tried to do such and such, tried to signpost the group to go here, but it didn't quite work out, and and I don't feel like they were fulfilled. Uh, how do I avoid that? Or you know, the serious sort of like GM to GM kind of talk, and I was very happy to accommodate him on that. So I always felt as if you know he had a degree of uh, respect for me on you know, what I thought and that. Um, but as always in these videos, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you and tell you what I'm thinking, tell you the truth as I see it. Um, that's just what I've always done. So I'm not going to sugarcoat things. And, uh, as you'll see. So, yeah, there was that. It was, it was okay. <clears throat> but it was quite a convoluted campaign. There was an awful lot of characters to try to follow. And for me, that was quite difficult to follow all of the the facts and information going on, especially the fact that we, we pretty much were able to play only fortnightly. Uh, and I'd spend a lot of my time with really, really not very much to say because the other people are kind of leading the way. And sometimes even when you start speaking, they shout over you and things now something happened something happened and it's one of the old classics where player expectation clashes with GM expectation okay so well the way the GM thinks things are running and if the player thinks they're running a different way and you're both confident of that then there's just going to be turmoil and that's what we hit upon but 
you know, I'm I'm going to be very forthright about it and and defend my position of why I came from where I did, and I'll explain the reasons why. So let's let's delve in into this a little bit more of the, the heart of what was going on here. So we were Ordo Xenos. Now there was a point where the group decided to help uh, these Eldar as acolytes, you know. And Nara, the Inquisitor, gave the group the choice to, you know, whether to help or not. And Robin's other group, who he, you know, played this with, they, uh, they took the opposite choice. They didn't help the, uh, the Eldar. But this group decided, yeah, do you know what? We will help, you know, give this Farseer and her daughter safe passage through to, you know, where they need to go. And at the time, Solomon was very, very upset at this. And he said, yeah, I don't agree with that. But, you know, he's outvoted and outdecided. And, yeah, there was nothing really to be done at that point. And now, bear in mind, Solomon had gone against the group secretly before and uh, for the benefit of the group and helped them and been very RP about it, which I'll give you an example of in a sec. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I wrote to the GM on Facebook and PM'd him saying, you know, this is the Solomon's position about what's going on here. He doesn't want these Eldar to be handed over. We're Ordo Xenos. Uh, the Emperor's words taken literally means, you know, we will suffer, not the alien. And therefore, you know, it can't be allowed to happen. We're supposed to be Ordo Xenos. Some of the players happen to remember a fact of information that apparently the Inquisition had uh, signed up um, some sort of peaceful terms with the Eldar that at least... Uh, they can move through each other's territory. The Eldar can move through the this particular piece of space or, or whatever. But I think it's a, a it's a totally different thing to you know handing them over yourself when you've got them in your custody. And you are Auto Xenos, remember. <laughs> um, and then there's a certain sort of fact that that a cleric, fundamentalist cleric is really ecclesiarchy first before anything else before inquisition and that's fairly the important point there so uh anyway said on on you know private message here to to the gm look this is what solomon's gonna do he's gonna go to the top brass explain to them and uh, the, the, the Eldar's right there on the ship. And, you know, just go apprehend it right now. I get the feeling that the Eldar, the child of the Eldar, was plot-centric to what the GM was trying to do in the, in, in, in the forward movement. And I think Solomon attempting to do that was actually screwing with the GM a little bit. Also, the GM doesn't like to run politics too much. And uh, is fairly uh, fearful to get into that kind of territory, but I say that the very fact that that, that um, you're talking about a foreign dignitary, basically, and you know being able to transport through your land and the handover, that's politics right through and through you that you are you know setting up. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, so explained this and I said you can consider that done all right that's you know let's go ahead with that and and uh, get back to me on on, on on what happens or or you know take make the movement on this as soon as, as as soon as you want I'm giving you GM tools to use here but but basically it was warning him weeks maybe months really in advance before it was all gonna go off and there were some other wishes as well that were uh, communicated through and I noticed that they hadn't happened and what it actually turned out to be 
was that um, those other wishes and these that I'm saying, you know, this is what's happening. Uh, the GM figured, well, you didn't actually say it at the table, the virtual table, so to speak. So you haven't actually said it. And to me, the idea was that this wasn't something to be said in front of the group. I felt that I'd explained in in the message to him that that this is what was happening. You know, take it that this has is what my character is now doing. You know, between sessions, this is this is between sessions. You know, this is so so that we don't uh, weigh it all up onto the, the the beginning of the next session because that's another thing. You know, a lot of the players will spotlight hog, and I try to avoid that. And so by saying, oh, oh, now is my moment, just by having it tucked away with the GM, I get to avoid doing that. We've explained what my character's doing. We don't have to do a whole big thing of it. And we don't reveal it to the players. So that when the reveal comes, because it doesn't matter how good an rp -er you are, how good you can avoid meta, and some people will still meta, but even if you can avoid it, it will still be a pleasant twist for the player when it happens so you you're you're there trying to ensure that social contract is going to pay off well for everybody else you you know you're communicating secretly with the gm so that he can produce the most drama punch for pound you know pound for pound drama punch so i mean that's trying to feed the gm all of that 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 possibility to 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 throw down on the group and you know really put out there and you know he likes throwing stuff down on the group he's uh, admits that you know he puts on his troll face and, and laughs evilly while the group are, are left with a, a a wicked scenario to try to um figure out <clears throat> and uh so yeah i mean i had no compunction about that but anyway right uh so I'd I'd put all of that, that that that's happening, and I was sure that you know he must have taken that into account that these secret conversations were happening. But then the next session started, and the Inquisition hadn't raided the ship and hadn't you know found the Eldar and done all this, and I didn't really even get a conversation back of you know what was said back um, to Solomon, you know my cleric. So uh, I kind of assumed that I'd been forgotten about. And it did start to feel that way anyway in the group, like some of the other people were perhaps more important because they shouted loudest and whoever would shout loudest would, you know, get the, the attention really. And and it was only more recently towards the uh, later sessions, like the second to last session I played, that that was actually made a thing of to not do that. So, uh, yeah, anyway time of the session came you know and i was you know uh skype pming the gm right 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 through the session and sort of in the lead up to the the, the point that the eldar thing would actually come into effect because the group had taken the eldar off off, off the ship and taken her to hand over to her people okay so that was about to happen and i was still worried i thought the fact that it still hasn't come out and and, and that the eldar's been allowed to remove it like this it feels like I, um, I've been forgotten about, have I? I? I don't know what's going on here. And, and I was even PMing him, saying, look, look, this is going to you know, massively stop them here. Everything that's that's been planned is, is about to come off, yeah, kind of thing. And you know, the GM was fine with that. At, n at no point told me anything to to give me concern or whatever or c communicated anything and so the handoff happened and then th a series of things unfortunate things happened so my character grabbed the Eldar child and put a gun to her head he had like a, a pistol thing okay an iron talon actually and uh, snatched it her out of the Farseer's hands and said, look, I'm going to shoot her if you make a move. This hand handoff can't happen. Step back here. You know, you're you're under the order Xenos and you're going nowhere. The whole group were like, oh, Solomon, you're screwing us now, kind of thing. 
And Solomon would said, said, no, I'm actually saving your souls. And I think to, to him, that's, you know, completely the truth. You're conspiring with an alien. And, you know, he's also reported their inquisitor, Nara, to the high inquisitor lord, okay, reported her to him, said, look, she's helping to do this. She's conspiring with it. She tried to cover up one of the group um, uh, being a late bloomer with psycho powers and, and things like that. She wanted to cover that up. You know, Solomon's reporting her. Now, uh, things kind of got crazy. And the GM suddenly seemed to be surprised when I started speaking to the group openly for the shock to kind of come off that, oh, wait, so you actually did speak to the Inquisitor. And I said, you know, I did. You know that the conversations have been happening and all this. And he said, yeah, I don't think Solomon had actually done it. And I was just like, head table, you know. What the fuck? Really? Seriously, this this whole thing is just completely gone to bollocks then. If that If that's the case. Um, and then it got worse because, you know, he's holding the gun to the, the, the Eldar child's head and he says, I'm going to pull the trigger if you, if you move, I'm watching you. Because he knows, you know, she's a fast year, she's going to blast him with something or whatever. And so the GM starts prepping up this, this like mind attack thing that the Eldar's going to put out. And, uh, it's not an immediate cast. Now, bearing in mind that the gun is to the child's head. So to actually pull that trigger, that's not even a half action. Let's, let's come on, let's, let's be serious now. You can pull those things by accident, which is why when you hold a gun, you're supposed to keep a straight finger across the trigger and not have it like that so you don't jerk pull it and, and fire it by mistake. That's, you know, that's, that's practically a free action. If anything, it's a quarter action. Come, come on. Even if you called it half action, the psycho power that she was casting was more than that anyway. It was more than a half action. It was obviously, you know, at least a full action. I'm not sure how long it actually was, but it, it wasn't a short little one. All right. And what she's not going to give away any sign that she's doing it. The GM said she's casting it and that she's casting it at me, this mind attack thing. And I said, right, I'm pulling the trigger. Pulling the trigger. In that case, sod it. We weren't in an initiative turn order or anything like that. And I argue that, I mean, I said, well, he, he would have seen she's doing it. And a few of the other players came back with, no, no, because it's, you know, it's a mental attack. It's not going to give that away. Well, you know, people give some sort of indicator that they're doing that, don't they? You know, one false move off you that I don't like and I'm pulling the trigger. And I say, I'm pulling the trigger. And the GM's like, oh, you didn't get a chance. You didn't get a chance. This has come off. This has happened. This has hit you. I'm like, yeah, but I'm pulling the trigger. I saw she's doing it. I'm pulling the trigger. Let, let, let me die. That's fine. Let me get hit by this thing. I'm still pulling the trigger. I'm doing it. Now... What we came up, I mean, uh, Professor X, you know, he's all like hands on the head and psychic attack. It's probably even going to be like a handout or something like that. Um, you, I mean, you, you imagine like a, a Games Workshop model posed just like arms by the side, just staring at you. And that's their psychic attack they're doing. It's not going to happen, is it? They're going to like some sort of hand gesture or eye gesture. Or you're going to see something swirling there. You're going to like... There's going to be some indicator. Let's be fucking fair. All right. Let's let's be fair here. <laughs> There's going to be something that you're going to have a chance to actually see. And, you know, if, if it's just if it's like swirly blue shit right in front of the person's face that fires out or, or some sort of ghost mist or or distortion in the air coming or, or like the 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 air blowing up around the, the, the farce here as they're about to fire this mental thing out or their eyes beginning to like burn you and you don't like the feel of it um you're gonna get something surely some sort of indicator and so i say i'm pulling the trigger pulling the trigger oh you can this has come off too quick so you know that there is kind of getting fucked um and I think what happened here is that the Eldar child had some severe plot armor on 
and f for me, that is 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 a GM faux pas. Because if they would get shot, they should get shot. Because at that point, you take away player power of expectation of immersion of any kind of player contribution, and you just throw it out the window and you say, "Well, let's just let's just play a storybook like you've written it then, and forget about you know what we do." How about you just sit down and read us a story like this is fucking Jack and Ori, all right? And we're in kindergarten. That's fine. And that's basically what you're at then doing. So um, that was really very traumatic. And, you know, as far as the GM's concerned, because, you know, the GM's call is final and that's that. You know, down Solomon goes, blast from this, all of his wounds out. He's unconscious, has to burn a fate point just to survive. Just from one mental attack, you know, womp, like that. You know, I go from five fate points, five, which was the cap that the GM was allowing anyone to have in, in this, okay, that's fine, uh, down to four, because of an unnecessary attack that didn't need to happen. And I'm questioning, I'm saying, where's the Inquisition? Why aren't they pitching in? I've warned them, I've told them. And he's even then retroactively speaking to me about the fact that Solomon's gone to the Inquisition. And he's saying, oh, well, um, the, the Inquisition aren't here and they're not going to turn up in this. Because he knew that another Aldar faction were about to attack this Aldar faction, and that it would have got too messy, as he put it. Okay, which again only actually fucks my character, because all of his way that he could protect himself, and the caution that he's gone to has been ignored and thrown out. So you know the cavalry won't be coming, and you know he's been completely misled, led wrong up the garden path. Yeah, so. Then we get to a point where he's unconscious and, you know, he's tied up on the ship. And the group are all talking then. Uh, you know, the group take him back, back into the ship. But they're all like, oh, shall we just, you know, off him then? Leave him behind? Shall we just shoot him? And I, I argued with the group over this because I said, you're acolytes, but, but you, not all of you are psychopaths. Some of you are not cold-blooded killers, and you know, most of you aren't, okay? Solomon's a bloody cold-blooded killer. He's a redemptionist. He's allowed to behave in a psychopathic manner. It's in character. But if you are a sort of person who, who wants to feel uh, something for an, uh, an Eldar and her child, and you want to protect them and hand them off back to her people, you know... Why, why is it you want to do that? Cause, because you are a feeling person, yeah? You're not a psychopath. Fine. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and <laughs> I, I, I kind of couldn't believe it because normally the, the general point of view in, in this world is that humans don't like the Eldar. They've, they've been indoctrinated not to like the Eldar. This is a high dystopian, grim, dark universe where you're not allowed to think too much for yourself. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So anyway, you know, he's tied up and they're casually talking about, well, should we kill him or should we not? And I said, come on, that's really bad role play. Are you, are you kidding me? Well, you can just be blasé about that. Oh, yeah, so we just shoot him then, you know. Teammate that's been with you right from the beginning. That's fine, you know. He's the cleric. You know, he's given prayers over your dead comrades and over you and fought beside you and you've seen only nothing but braveness and you've, you've seen him act responsibly and save the, the team and fight for the Inquisition with everything he's got. And, um, you know, he's bled beside you. And... Uh, Saved your skin with his own plans on more than one occasion by being crazy and, uh, uh, and unexpected, being that kind of person that could do the unexpected and basically get you out of the shit that you're in. But, um, yeah, just talk calmly about shooting him, whatever, you know, just, hey, just keep him in chains and just shoot him, you know. Oh, yeah, that'll make it easier. Yeah, because, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. That is role playing fail, I'm sorry. But it is, and especially if you're talking about trying to shoot your own teammate, whatever. 
yeah, he, it's not like he's shot one of the group or something. He grabbed an Eldar and put a gun to it. Yeah, he's in, like endangered their mission as they see it, but they're, you know, that's fine. It's a difference of opinion. He's not attacked one of the group. It's an Eldar. They're on about shooting him over holding an Eldar hostage. So, you know, they're acting like heretics, all of them. And they're trying to decide what to do, and I just can't believe it. I just, I mean, sickened shock. And I'm thinking, uh, someone's going to have to look at the fact, surely, that they're acting this way and they're scared of, the, of, of, of what the Inquisition's going to do next based on what he's said, what he's reported to the Graves, the man at the top, yeah? Um, what information he's given away. Should we just get rid of him now and do a run, you know, do a runner? How should we... How should we play this? They're talking like that. They're desperate people on the edge. And I, I get that desperate people are forced to do desperate things. That's fine. But then the next week comes, the next session comes, and one of the players decides, yeah, I'm going to shoot him. So um, I couldn't be present for that. And it was you know, probably best that I wasn't anyway. Couldn't find my headphones and my microphone thing wasn't working at all. Uh, <laughs> any other alternative microphones are not working for it so uh the gm had instructions that what what my guy was going to do was burn burn a fate point or whatever bust out of his chains by breaking his arms every bone that he needs to to bust out of his constraints and run into the cockpit and you know grab the stick with his uh, teeth and force it into a plummet and crash the ship taking everyone out because you know they they think they've got him in a trap and you don't do that to solomon you know he'll destroy himself to take you out and that's that's um you know that's the instructions but then he thought oh that's that's um not going to be able to work then because uh the ship's actually not taken off so we're actually apparently we're all sitting in a ship and it isn't even flying so why are we sitting in a ship why 